Hi, it's Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science, Chemistry PhD, and Sunscreen Nerd. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the questions I always get asked about sunscreen. You put it on in the morning, and then you put your makeup on top, and then you're meant to reapply it every two hours. So how are you meant to do this without messing up your makeup? And do you really need to reapply that often? So that's what we're talking about today. If you like nerding out about beauty, you can click the thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Why do we need to reapply sunscreen? If you look on your sunscreen packaging, usually on the back, it'll say something like, reapply every two hours. The reason is that sunscreen gets less effective over time. There are a few reasons for this. Firstly, sunscreen comes off if you brush against it with your hair, your hands, your clothes. Less sunscreen means less protection. The second reason is that when you first apply sunscreen, it forms an even continuous layer on your skin. But over time, this layer becomes less and less even. It starts breaking up and clumping up. This is because of things like oil coming out of your skin, any sweat, and also just moving your face around. This isn't sunscreen, but it's foundation, which is another product that's meant to stay on your skin for as long as possible in an even layer. So it uses a lot of the same technologies. You can see that it clumps up and moves around and migrates into pores over time. You can also see this on my video on foundation clumping. The sunscreen film also gets thinner because it starts evaporating and absorbing into your skin. The last reason is the one that people mostly talk about, and that is some sunscreen filters get less effective over time as they absorb more UV. This is called photo instability, and it only actually applies to some of the older chemical filters. Sunscreens these days are usually formulated to be photostable, so they'll use some of the newer chemical filters that are photostable, or they'll use mineral filters, or they'll use special technologies that make the photo unstable filters stable enough that it's not really a big worry. That means that they won't have this specific problem, but the first two issues still apply, so they still do get less effective over time. So at the start, when you apply your sunscreen, that's when your sunscreen is most effective, and then over time it gets less and less effective. But how much less are we talking about? Unfortunately, there's not that much info on how long sunscreen lasts on your skin if you aren't moving around that much. I've only managed to find one study directly on this topic. 20 people applied sunscreen with a special dye in it so that the researchers could photograph them every two hours and track where that sunscreen went. They didn't use any other products on their face, and they were allowed outside for up to an hour. Here's a graph of what happened. On average, after two hours, there was 16% less sunscreen. By four hours, it dropped by another 7%, and by eight hours, it was another 4.5% less. After eight hours, there was a total of almost 30% less dye, which means around 30% less sunscreen coverage. We can't confidently say that these results apply for every sunscreen because we know that different sunscreens will last for different amounts of time. So for example, if you have a water-resistant sunscreen, that tends to last better on your skin. If you're using chemical sunscreen filters, these tend to absorb a little bit into the top layers of your skin and stay around for longer. But it means that there's probably still a significant amount of sunscreen left on your skin at the end of the day if you don't move around that much for most sunscreens. As an indication, if you take 30% away from SPF 50, you get SPF 35, SPF 30 becomes SPF 21, and SPF 15 becomes SPF 10. So the higher the SPF you start with, the more likely it is that you'll have a high amount left at the end of the day. But is this protection enough? Like I said in my video on wearing sunscreen indoors, how much protection you need depends on how much UV you're exposed to, and how concerned you are about the effects of UV. The main concerns for most people are skin cancer, wrinkles, and hyperpigmentation. So for a lot of people on most days, if you're not getting a lot of sun and you're not doing a lot of physical activity, you're not running around, you're not swimming, then the amount that you apply in the morning is probably going to be enough. But if you're doing a bit more, then you'll probably want to reapply your sunscreen. So how do we do it? If you're reapplying your sunscreen on top of your makeup, then you'll either have to mess up your sunscreen or apply less sunscreen or apply a less even layer. There isn't really a way to avoid this compromise, unfortunately. So I've divided my approach to reapplying sunscreen into three main situations that work for me. If I'm not going to get much sun, so I go to work in the morning, I get most of my indirect exposure in the first two hours, and then I come home at night in the dark. Then I don't reapply and I rely on the sunscreen that I applied in the morning to get me through. 
I also avoid walking in the sun, so nothing too extreme, I'll walk on the shady side of the street, I'll sit away from the window on the train. This is most days, and I found that for me, with my skin type, my sun exposure situation, and the sunscreens I'm using, my freckles are lightening, my hyperpigmentation goes away quickly, and so I take that as a sign that I'm doing enough. I've done a video on my favourite sunscreens, which I'll link below if you want to find out more about those. Let's go to the other extreme with lots and lots of sun. So let's say I go have breakfast with a friend in the morning, and then we go on a four hour walk around a lot of nice beaches. I'm going to get tons of sun exposure, I'm probably going to be sweating a bit, and I really should be reapplying my sunscreen every two hours because I'll get sunburnt. In that case, I put on water-resistant sunscreen and then put on very, very simple makeup. So maybe a tint of moisturizer and some blush, or maybe just concealer in the key areas. Then every two hours, I'll reapply that water-resistant sunscreen and maybe touch up the makeup if I feel like I need it. I'm not going to bother wearing a lot of heavy blush or contour or highlighter because I need those to stay in specific areas of my face, and if I'm reapplying sunscreen every two hours, that's just not going to happen. When you're reapplying sunscreen, you don't have to cleanse properly or anything, you can just reapply it on top. If you do have a bit of dirt, then you might want to wipe it off with a makeup wipe or something, so you don't end up just exfoliating your face while you're putting on sunscreen. I'll also wear a hat and sunglasses and long sleeve clothes, and I'll be reapplying sunscreen on my body as well. Then there's the in-between situation, which I think is the one that most people care about. This is when you want your makeup to look pretty good, but at the same time, you want to get a decent amount of sun protection. Say I'm working in the office, but I want to take a nice long walk at lunch, and I'm going home on the train while the sun is coming in horizontally through the windows. In this situation, I'll have my standard sunscreen and makeup that I've applied in the morning, but I want to reapply sunscreen on top of that makeup. The most important thing to remember in this situation is that the amount of protection you get scales with the amount of sunscreening product you apply. On average, this is pretty much linear, so if you apply half the amount of product, you get half the amount of protection. If you apply a quarter, you'll get around a quarter. So it's a matter of getting as much sunscreen on your face as possible in an even layer, while also not disturbing your makeup that much. So let's talk about the sorts of products we can use for reapplication. First off, there probably isn't that much protection in your foundation. In a 2006 study, they found that on average people applied around 0.54 grams of liquid foundation on their face. They found that there was a lot of variation, and I actually only apply about 0.2 grams of foundation. So for that average 0.54 grams of foundation on a 400 square centimetre face, you'll get these actual SPFs. While for 0.2 grams of foundation, you'll get this level of protection, depending on the labelled SPF. Powders are even worse. There was a study that was done in the 80s on 10,000 US women, and they found that the average application of face powder was 85 milligrams. Even with an SPF 50 powder, that gives you only SPF 5.5. Now there's tons of variation with different products and different people's application, so I actually emailed a bunch of powder sunscreen companies to ask if they had any data on the amount of protection you'd expect given a typical application of powder. The answers I got back were really variable, and as much as I want powder sunscreen to be a thing because it's so convenient and so easy, I just didn't really find the data convincing. Overall, it just seems really unlikely that you're going to get enough powder on your face reliably every time to get an even continuous layer that you need for any sort of significant protection, even as a top-up method. The most promising data I got was from Color Science. Their specially treated powder is meant to stick to skin better, and it's 80 minutes water resistant, which means that they got people to sit in a jacuzzi for four sessions of 20 minutes with that powder on their skin. And at the end, they came out and tested that patch of skin, and they found that it still had SPF 50, which is really impressive. They actually measured the amount of powder left on the skin afterwards, and on average, it was 0.542 milligrams per square centimetre. This probably doesn't happen with most powders, that average 85 milligram application is less than half of this, so I was pretty impressed. I think their sunscreen powder also works particularly well because they have a really high amount of active ingredients in it. The bad news is that this result comes from a standard water resistance test, and it's pretty unrealistic when it comes to a powder. So they put 2 milligrams per square centimetre of powder on the skin, pat it out into an even layer, leave it for 15 minutes, and then do the water test. Even if we assume that all of that extra powder that didn't stick on the skin wasn't necessary, 
That 0.542 milligrams per square centimeter still works out to be 0.22 grams for your full face, which is quite a lot. To get that much product out, you have to swirl the brush on your face for a full minute while priming the brush four times. In our new standard unit for time, that is six happy birthdays, which I think is pretty unrealistic, especially because the instructions don't tell you specifically how many times you need to prime the brush. Plus with powder sunscreens, a lot of them come in really small pack sizes, like seven and a half grams, six grams, even 2.5 grams. And so that adds up really quickly. I think as far as powders go, Color Science is probably your best bet, especially because it's water resistant, and I think this goes for most water resistant powders. They are going to be more reliable because they go through that water resistance test before their SPF is remeasured. But I do think that other formats for reapplication are going to be more reliable, they're going to be more likely to give you the protection you want. So there's only really two options that I think are reasonable that I've come across so far. Firstly, spray sunscreens. These are relatively thin sprays that you can spray over your face. I think in terms of the evenness of coverage, spray sunscreens can perform better than cream sunscreens. That's because they have a really low viscosity, they're really runny, and so they can get into the valleys of your skin better than creams can. This is spraying from 20 centimeters away, and even though there's droplets, I think if you apply a few layers, you can get pretty even coverage. Again, one of the big issues is how much you end up applying. It's really easy to unapply if you just missed it on casually. I recommend that you do a bunch of thin layers and letting it dry in between so that it doesn't build up and run your makeup down your face. You can spray your spray into a quarter teaspoon measure to see how many sprays you need to get a reasonable amount of sunscreen. With these three sprays, I found that I needed between four and nine sprays to get a quarter teaspoon amount. I recommend checking this yourself with your own spray. There's also an issue with aerosol sunscreens. These are the ones that come in a pressurized can and you just hold down the nozzle and it keeps spraying. This is actually pretty rare for a face sunscreen. Most of them I found are in pumps. A test in Choice Magazine, to which I am a proud subscriber, found that for aerosol sunscreens, about 40 to 60% of it was actually propellant. Aerosol spray sunscreens are tested without the propellant, so that means you would actually have to spray for a lot longer to get the protection you think you're getting. A few tips for using spray sunscreens. Try not to inhale it because that's not good for you. So I recommend holding your breath, applying it, and then walking a couple of steps before breathing again. Also be really careful when you're applying outdoors because if you just spray it on your face, it might blow into your eyes or just blow away. The other option that I think is really good is if you just reapply your regular sunscreen lotion over your makeup with a cushion puff. James and Robert Welsh recently did a video about reapplying sunscreen over makeup, and they recommended cushion compacts as a good compromise between getting enough sunscreen and not messing up your makeup. But one of the problems with these is that most of these products have minerals in them, and that can give a white cast. So what I prefer doing is using the cushion applicator with a regular sunscreen lotion. So this technique has been around in the Asian skincare community for years. Some people actually buy an empty cushion container and put the sunscreen in it, so this is what it looks like. Something like this, where you've got like the little applicator on top, and then underneath you have the foundation in this case, but you can put like sunscreen there. I don't think it's necessary though, you can just use the cushion applicator, so the little thing on top, and just use your regular lotion on like the back of your hand. These applicators are really, really cheap online. You shouldn't pay more than a couple of dollars for one. I really like these because they are really thin, so they're easy to carry around. They also don't soak up as much sunscreen, which is important because remember, the amount matters a lot when you're talking about sunscreen. You can also fold these so that you can get it into like tight areas around your nose. I find that this technique works best with like a lightweight silicone-based sunscreen, so I'm using this one, Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence. The hardest bit is not transferring colored makeup onto the areas that are skin colored on your face. So I recommend starting with the skin colored bits and then moving onto like the blush at the end. After you do it, you can also touch up your makeup and make yourself look a little bit more presentable if something messed up. All right, so put on a decent amount of sunscreen on the back of your hand. So you pat a little bit into your sponge and then you pat it onto your face. So if you're wearing lipstick, it's probably a good idea to like do this. Also check if your applicator has lipstick on it so you don't like stamp it everywhere. And then you can pause and let that dry and then put on another layer on like the skin colored bits. And 
and then move on to the colored bits. Also check your sponge every once in a while to make sure it's not too pink. So yeah, you can aim it appropriately and you're not just stamping random stuff on yourself. I find that in terms of transfer, it's actually not too bad. Yeah, there's a little bit of pink there, it's not too bad. So yeah, that is pretty much all applied. I have a tiny bit left on my on my hand, so I'm just gonna put that into some of the areas I care about the most. So top of the cheeks, the nose. So yeah, that works pretty well. Um, my makeup mostly looks good. I am now missing a little bit of concealer here, so the concealer got moved. So I would just go in with the concealer and blot that out again. I don't think it's really possible to reapply it over your eyeshadow without ruining it, so I guess if this is happening on a day where you're expecting it, then just don't wear dark eyeshadow or just make sure you reapply your eyeshadow afterwards. I filmed this part before I did the sunscreen reapplication part, just in case it went horribly badly. Whatever reapplication method you're using, you should always check to make sure that your ingredients are compatible with each other. Some ingredients can break down others. The impact is probably pretty low, but there's a bit more in my ebook sample chapter if you're interested. Also remember that it's not going to be perfect, so make sure you do other sun protection things. So wear a hat, wear sunglasses, wear long sleeve shirts, and try to stay in the shade. Or when in doubt, just go with the full reapplication. If you have a really good sunscreen reapplication hack that I haven't mentioned, make sure you share it with everyone in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a like if you like, subscribe, click the bell. You can also follow me on Instagram and check out my blog. See you next time for more nerdy beauty.